cabinetryconstruction.com. Hi guys, welcome to the fifth episode of our Pod Coast podcast. Um, we have here Jason Suman. You want to do the, do the introduction again for us? Let's see if we'll be better. If you do it. My introduction? Yeah, it's your introduction. podcast. <laughs> guys, we have Jason here today. He's um, in construction for how long? 11 years now. 11 years? Mm-hmm. And your trade is? I'm an interior trim carpenter. Um, and we also do um, custom cabinetry, uh, kitchens in general, and you know pretty much anything that entails the inside uh, right. finishes of the home. Okay, we, we jumped right in, but I want to also give a little bit of an introduction. Jay is someone I know for about 10 years. Yeah, just about. Right, we met in church. Yeah. Um, good friend of mine. Yeah. I've known his wife for a long time as well, mm-hmm. friend of his family. Um, I know a little bit of your background um, growing up, but also we'll, we'll talk a little bit about personal later, but in construction, I know you started working for someone else, right? Yes. And did you always do construction carpentry or did you begin in another trade? Um, I started with a bunch of different things. If we were to go down the list um, of everything I've done before, um, getting into carpentry, it'd be a long podcast. But um, as your typical, you know, um, uh, you know, son of immigrants coming to this country, you learn from an early age, you know, to you know, start, you know, get yourself a job and start making your own money. So I have actually been working since I was fourteen. My uh, my birthday present for fourteen years old was uh, an application to start working in a market basket. <laughs> My mom said, you know, hey, you know, you want to start, you know, you want to go to the movies, you want to, you know, buy some shoes, you know, you, you got to get yourself a little job. So, so I did. So I started working at 14, working the weekends, and um, then just did a bunch of, bunch of oddball jobs. Um, and, you know, restaurant industry, painting, uh, landscaping, I mean, I mean, you know, working at sports centers, um, and then finally in 2010, I started, you know, dabbling in construction. And then in 2012, I actually started doing carpentry work. So, so 2010, how old are you at that point? I believe in 2010, I was about 18 years old. So you started um, young in construction? Yes, yeah. yes, but not, not in carpentry. I started with um, we, the first construction job I got was as a gutter installer. Okay. Installing gutters, and um, I did that, and that was a really fun job. Definitely for the young man, you know, because um, you're up on roofs all day, hot roofs all summer long, carrying, you know, 40 foot ladders. Um, but it really did prepare me for what was to come. And, in, in the you know, it really taught me um, really good job ethic. And um, it really did prepare me now looking back in retrospect, it did, really did prepare me for the next chapter, which was right around the corner in my life. Right, and, and this this is in New Jersey, right? Or that was in New Jersey, yes. That you were installing gutters. Yes, yeah. and we were talking a little earlier before uh, we started the show about, you know, uh, tight streets and tight corners mm-hmm. and maneuvering around construction on the Cape. And, you know, New Jersey is pretty much the same. You know, it's just very busy, you know, uh, tight streets, houses bunched up together. So it's, it's, had, it's had its own challenges as well over there. Right. So you did that for a couple of years? I did that for about two years. Before jumping into actual carpentry? Before actually moving to the Cape and started as a, as a carpenter. So you only started working as a carpenter when you moved here? Yes. And that was that with Emerson already? Or that was you... with Emerson in Nantucket, yeah. Yeah, and that was exterior work, interior work, what kind of carpentry? Um, so when I started, I spent the first four months exclusively doing uh, exterior trim work, exterior jobs in general, uh, decking, sidewall. And um, it was funny in Nantucket because we would spend the winter working outside and the summer working inside. Mm-hmm. Um, why, why is that? It was just the way that the jobs landed at that time. Um, you know, okay. just the, just, it was just the way it was um, for, for scheduling uh, during the time that I was there, mm-hmm. which was funny. Because, um, you know, I had just come from gutter where you work outside all year. So it really wasn't that bad of a transition, you know, mm-hmm. just a lot windier. Right, <laughs> right, 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 right. You, so you learned carpentry um, from, the, from the ground up when you got here. 
you had no experience that you brought? My there? first day as a carpenter, I did not know how to swing a hammer. <laughs> Um, that's just the honest truth. I right. mean, I didn't, you know, uh, just didn't know how to swing a hammer. I remember, you know, just picking it up from zero. And, but I remember telling myself from, I knew that it was going to be a, a challenge. You know, I, I knew it was going to be very challenging, but I was prepared for that You're challenge. for the challenge. I was uh, yeah. down for the challenge. That's a good way to put it. Yeah. Right. I remember, I remember Emerson telling me, like, when you worked with him, that you were always good with people. Like dealing with people, so that was a skill that you brought from home. I would, I would imagine, right? Um, honestly, I wanna, I to be completely honest, I think what broke um a lot of my barriers as far as talking to people was actually when I lived in Jersey. Um, I took on a second job as a salesperson, uh, selling on the streets, mm -hmm. selling selling uh, perfumes. Um, I would I would go into boutiques and I would go into uh, hairdressers and I would shops and I'd go into bakeries and I would and it was like door to door sell, selling to people and you you know you know as your first role as a salesman you don't sell the product you sell yourself mm -hmm. to the person you sell your personality and, and you know you don't sell anything people buy right and I think that broke a lot of the ice of how to you know um, speak with people we had training seminars and I was really interested. Yeah, it was really interesting and um it's just funny looking back how those things kind of prepared me for what it was you know like i already mentioned coming for the next for the next couple of things that was going to happen in my life right but even like even though you had like really good social skills and people skills working there you, you had to learn the trade before you could eventually venture off on your own right absolutely so you said you didn't know anything when you started i did not know even how to pick up a hammer so, um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I don't say that literally, obviously. Yeah. I just mean, you know. Um, you didn't know much, right? I didn't know much. Yeah. But you were, you were, um, how long, like, how long did it take you to start grasping and actually, like, not taking that next step from only being a helper that's always going to the van to pick up materials or um, that guy that's always just helping someone else? How long did it take you for, for you to pretty much go to the next step? For me personally, um, it took about, I want to say, um, somewhere around year two of doing construction, things just started really clicking um, for me. Uh, but that also is because of the interest that I had in actually learning the trade. I think that some people just kind of get in the comfort zone and it could be a little longer for them. Right. But um, for me, I was always the first one to be eager to want to do the next challenging job, right. whatever that was, you know. Uh, it could be with, hey, let me do this deck by myself, or let me, you know, be the front man in this job, or let me take care of this job, or let me do this ceiling. And um, then that, you know, so, so I was kind of asking, always asking for more responsibility. And then, so for me, it, then, you know, you get you get put into the pressure situation, you gotta figure it right. out. So, so you were constantly putting yourself out of your comfort zone right? exactly always that's a good way to put it and you know obviously making all the mistakes one does as a carpenter you know uh the best way to learn carpentry work is to make the mistakes and tell yourself okay i won't make that mistake anymore right um and the experience I, I, everything gets just gets uh really just comes down to the experience you know yeah and it's it's a challenging um, for people that are going to be watching you worked on the islands right so Nantucket. yeah you have to take a boat there and back every day. Yes. So my daily routine would be wake up around five ish in the morning, uh, be on the boat at six in the morning. Uh, it's like an hour travel plus some time to get there, um, and then we would work till seven, uh, seven at night. Wow. That's... And then get on the seven thirty boat back home, be home um, probably around nine o'clock. So. And do that like Monday through Thursday. And then Friday, come home a little earlier. So pretty much Monday through Thursday, you just work and sleep. Yeah. Oh yes, work and sleep. And you, you were married already, right? With, yeah. Because when you got you moved here after you married, right? Or you moved here a yes. Bit. So I moved here because of marriage. Marriage, right? So how how's that? That that's probably so challenging, right? With with the marriage, because you guys were newly married. Right? Newly married. Um, I think I think circumstances allow people to kind of accept the the routine that they have to sacrifice. go through exactly the sacrifices they have to make um 
So I knew that it wasn't going to be a permanent situation. Um, what I always just saw was the end goal. Like I'm going to learn this. This is going to be, you know, I'm going to profession. I'm going to become a professional at this, and I'm going to be able to better my situation, better my 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 um my uh, circumstances. You know, Life eventually. Style, eventually yeah. Yes. So um, it was a sacrifice we had to make. And then at some point, I had to, you know, finally stop making that sacrifice because eventually I started having children. Oh, yeah. And that, and then and that never, never stopped having children, right? <laughs> so, yes, I have four children <laughs> now. Um, and now I have stopped having right. children. Right. Now you're done? Now I am yeah. done. Yeah, so, um, you, you never, did you ever put a deadline? Like, I want to learn in a certain, like, a certain time? Or were you just, like, everyday approach, like, do my best and eventually it will come to me? No, I think I woke up one day and just realized that um, I was ready to take the next step. Um, you know, construction is, is, is one day you just, things just start clicking in your head. You know, you see, you all, you know, you see the finished product before it ever happens. You right. see the entire thing finished in your mind, visually, you know, all the step by step to do it and make it happen. So. Yeah. Once I started getting to that level, I was like, uh, you know, I'm I'm ready to take the next step. Which was like working for yourself. Or? Which was uh, finally trying to venture off on my own. Yeah. Okay. And what was what was the first? So I know you I know you do interior carpentry, mm -hmm. right? Custom cabinets. What else? Um. Well, everything pretty much uh, to do with interior trim work. Um. And then and then eventually we got into you know cabinetry work. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I've seen I've seen like some of your work. And it looks really nice. We're gonna leave a Thank link you. for people to like check out your work. Thank it, you. It's really nice. Check out the work. Yeah. What's what's your Instagram? Uh, the Instagram is Swim on Finish Work, um, but the cabinet shop is Up Level Custom Cabinet. Okay. So it's two two different businesses. Right? Two different businesses. Yeah. So um, we talk about here a lot. When you work for someone else, you kind of have it easier in a way that like you show up, you put in your hours, you do your best. And you go home. Mm -hmm. When you work for yourself, you still show up, do your best. But when you go home, you don't, you don't rest. As you don't much. necessarily turn off. You know? Exactly. Like, how, how, was that challenging for you in the beginning? Or? It's still challenging. It's still challenging. It's right? still challenging. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not gonna sit here and 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 tell you that every day is not a, a something new to learn for me, and that I'm learning every day as we go. Uh, but yes, it's still challenging, you know, um, being able to say enough is enough and, um, but also be, you know, uh, res responsible enough to meet your deadlines and, 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 and the clients you have to talk to and, and, and there's that sweet balance, you know. Right. And, and like between knowing how to do the carpentry work with quality that you guys have and managing a business as far as finances and, you know, you got to invest in marketing, you got to invest in your employees and and um tools so you got to take care of all that stuff how do you do you have someone that helps you on that side of the business or is it all you no i i don't have the someone i have an entire team of employees who have been nothing but spectacular and i wouldn't be here today i wouldn't be where i am today if it wasn't for you know the absolutely phenomenal team of guys i have working for me that are committed that are uh you know um, self-motivated driven and they, you know, we, we work together and um, that allows me to focus more on the other side of the business. Right. And then the carpentry side, I trust that they will, will take care of. And then anything that I have to actually get involved with, I'm the first guy to, right. to get involved with. But you're, you're the main, you're the front guy, not the main guy, but the front guy. Mm -hmm. Let's say you're, you're the one who meets with the clients. Yes the meetings yes. and you're the one that sells the jobs mm -hmm. and you, you enjoy doing that I absolutely more than more than actually stalling and stuff or is it the same for you or? i say there's i say that um the sale sales aspect is important but the delivery of the product i would say is more important because if i do not execute um, project correctly and I don't deliver a project in a timely fashion and if you're not satisfied with the work that I put out that will be the last sale I make right so I believe that the um, 
the job, the actual doing the work is more important. Not you know, but obviously sales without sales there is no job. So right, right. They kind of have to work uh, hand in hand, right? Yeah, it's more hand in hand. Yeah, right. yeah. But you enjoy like meeting with clients because because I do a lot of selling, mm -hmm. and it's a lot of frustration to involve, right? Because you meet ten clients, you might close two, three, four, mm -hmm. maybe five if you're a top salesman. Um, so how do you deal with that? You know, like thinking you're gonna close a client, and like oh, this is a great meeting, like I think I got this job, and then. Well, we were, we were talking, um, dabbling a little bit, talking about, uh, I'm just going to bring it up because it's what we were talking about earlier with poker, um, where you just have to understand sometimes you're just going to get a bad hand, sometimes you're just going to get a cooler. So this, it's, it's like, you know, the same way, you just kind of learn to deal with the fact that you're not going to land every job, and you're not going to please everybody, and you're not going to um, be the, you know, the the guy doing the work um but the ones that you do you know though that's the one that you really really have to show up for and um respect and uh, make sure that you take care of because right. in our trade it's not about the one job it's about the you know this is this is a home that's going to need you know eventually further maintenance and um i want to build customers that can rely on me in 5, 10, 15, right. 20 years, you know, not just do a little cabin for you and never see you again. I, yeah. I like, I like to build and establish those relationships. Yeah. The client that's satisfied, they become a salesperson for you because they're going to refer their parents, their kids, their neighbors. They do have a tendency to champion for you right. to get work. Yes. Yeah. And also we always talk about it here. The money can be the main reason. You know, we have to make sure the client's satisfied. The money's gonna be the consequence of our, our good work. Yes. So if you if you um, I made the mistake when I was younger to, you know, just look at the figure and be like, oh, I'm gonna make this amount, and then like, concentrate on that. But the job never came out the way I wanted to, mm -hmm. and then the client's not satisfied. And it's like a snowball effect. You gotta make sure you satisfy the client. Put yourself on their shoes, right? Exactly. And if, exactly. You, if they're satisfied, you're gonna make money because, like you said, they're gonna be your client for twenty years. You know, and they're gonna bring other clients in. It's gonna be a snowball effect. It's almost for the good, not for the bad. Yeah, yeah. And you touched on something very important there, which is you know, making sure that you do the correct job and um, be the pr do and say what you mean, and um, and eventually what you're you you will make the money because um, especially in twenty twenty four, you know the bad ones really get weeded out fast right. with Google reviews and with, you know, online marketing, you know, you do one bad job and word gets around really fast nowadays. Right. So, right. Um, yeah, I definitely agree with you on that one. For the young ones, Jay, that are like looking to start, right? Cause, um, I talk to a lot of young kids and sometimes they're like, give me a tip, you know, like I want to start it and I want to do this. I want to do that. What would you say for like a 20 year old that's looking to start his own business? Well, well give, give them a couple of tips. Um, be ready for the absolute battle that you're going to have. And if you're not 120% committed, um, it will not work out for you. You have to be ready for the blood, sweat, and tears. Um, because if you're not, um, somebody will wake up hungrier than you. Right. Somebody woke up before you, and they are right behind you. Mm -hmm. And you have to be that. You have to be that guy that that um, that you know is hungry enough to go out and get it. And people do see that. Um, if you're highly motivated, it really does. It, it really does. Uh, you know, uh, come out of you. You know, and um, be ready. Don't don't. What I guess I'm trying to say is, do not be sold by easy because nothing is going to be yeah, easy that, that's what i was going to say specifically when you say blood blood sweat and tears like in a construction um scenario right that we're talking about well that be like in a construction scenario it most of the time means um that you won't you will not sell as many jobs as you think you will <laughs> you will not execute jobs as smoothly as you think you will you will you will be outbid. You will find that marketing is a lot harder than you think it is. 
you will find that showing up every day um, yourself is already, you know, is, is, is okay. But then when you bring in more people, you have to, well, the moment you rely on more people, you know, you will be upset sometimes. The disappointments you might find in other people, right. you know, and, and things happening. Unforeseen that if you don't have the mental, the mental, um, you know, uh, stamina mm -hmm. to see it through, you will, you know, you know, I hope not, but you, if, as if you're a 20 year old out there, I hope not give up. But, right, because you, you know, cave keep, in, right? Because you, you can yeah. cave in. You know, clients can be, you know, eccentric, um, you know, contractors, you know, uh, can be, you know, tough on you. You have to hear things in our business that you have to have tough skin, you know, um, you have to have tough skin, yeah, you know, um, sure. as a 20 year old, it's hard. Right. You know, Cause there are, we're as young men, I remember, you know, you have an ego, you are, you know, you, you, you're a young man, right? So yeah. it's hard to, to, to hear some things sometimes and just know that, you know, with experience, you know, you will become more confident in what you do. Yeah. You got to plant, right? You got you to plant, 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 and at some point you'll, you'll you, reap the exactly, rewards. Exactly. You, you're, so how long have you been in business now? Um, so I opened up the company in 2018. 18 yeah. so about five or six yeah. years right about um where are you guys like where are you now are you feeling like you still have a lot of room to grow are you satisfied with where your company is um, I'm satisfied but it's still like wanting to grow where are you now in your business right now i'm in a place where i finally um feel like i managed to take on more clients and actually handle the work where you know a lot of the t where before I I took on clients and I and I not been able to handle all the work so then you have to be subbing out or or you know doing a bunch of other uh, running around um, now I'm in a comfortable spot where I'm like I learned from that mistake and now I I, I have a a smaller crew of quality guys that are able to to do the work and um, I'm not as uh, rushed right to to so to, to answer your question right now i am in that growing state into the next level but doing it the right way you know with a good foundation instead of rushing it and um and slipping up and, right right you know so i am i do want to grow and expand still but um definitely doing it the right way because 2022 was a year where construction really boomed mm -hmm. um and it was good opportunities, but it was definitely also a learning experience for me. Right. You know, uh, as far as what works and what doesn't work. Right. And you touched on 2022. It was, I feel like after COVID, even during COVID, construction here really boomed. It really did boom. Yeah, like a lot of construction. It seemed like to be slowing down a little bit. Yes, um, just, just a bit. But for us here, we're still very busy. Mm -hmm. you know, um, how do you see the next few years in construction? Do you think it's going to more competitive less people um a lot of people a lot of new companies coming up if we're talking about our area specifically i think that um which is we're in cape cod by the way yeah. which is like a narrow way from boston mm -hmm. if you google cape cod if you're not from here you'll see that it's somewhat of a rich area yeah it's a more affluent area for sure right. um a what, little somewhat huh what is it what'd you say more affluent area. You got, the, sure. you got the fancy words, huh? <laughs> <laughs> F, what is it? Affluent. Affluent, yeah. okay. That's a new one for me. I didn't yeah. know that one. That means... That, means that just means richer, 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 richer. more, more, you know... Okay. Uh, That's gonna, we're going to make a cut of this one. New word. For my vocabulary. Yeah, you got to put... You've been reading a lot? Samuel's going to put it affluent <laughs> big on the screen. Affluent. Yeah. <laughs> You've been reading a lot? Uh -huh. Where are you getting those from? Is the clients. The affluent clients. They... Yes, I learned from the affluent clients. <laughs> right, they right. use big words. Right, right, right. Um, my bad, I can't even... No, it's okay. Um, this area is a little... From what I've seen, is a little more reception... Um, proof? Proof. I'm not saying it's 100%, mm -hmm. but who, who the hell would say that? Yeah, but right. um, it is a little more recession-proof because the people that are building houses on the Cape uh, have, you know, uh, are in a different tax bracket entirely <laughs> for the most part. Right. So um, a $1 million, $2 million project for them isn't going to change much. Right. But um, I see construction 
expanding into different areas in the United States that are going to have construction booms, right. where people are going to kind of follow the trend. Mm -hmm. And um, I see that this area, the big players are going to stay around, and a lot of the little guys who came up, if they're not, you know, well positioned, might just kind of stay with the low tide. Right, with and, the next, um, <laughs> and, yeah, end up dying. Yeah, well, I hope not, but, but <laughs> right, right, I'm no, just saying, no. I, I think that if you ask what I think is going to happen, I, I've been seeing that happen right. in the next, in the last year, year and a half. Yeah. yeah. And I'm very, and, and, you know, I'll caveat that by saying that I am very, very thankful, you know, um, to God and, and to, you know, the opportunities that I've had. Right. Because um, not everybody's as, you know, fortunate. Right, right. Yeah. It's, like you said, you have to have tough skin. You, know, you got to go through the ups and downs sometimes when people start their own businesses. Fabio talks talks a lot about that. When he started his own business, he would stay like two weeks at home. Two yeah. weeks at home. Yeah. And that's how it is, you know. Yeah. You get one job, you stay a couple weeks at home, and you can't. When I say at home, right, I mean like not working, but you got to be out there. You got to try to talk to someone, make phone calls, sell at the, you know, like grocery line that you're staying at that you you're waiting for to yeah. pay. But yeah, it's. So to walk backwards just a little bit, mm -hmm. um, I say jokingly that I my mother in law's house has you know wood wooden floors, and I say jokingly that I created a depression in her floor, walking back <laughs> and forth for hours on the phone trying to land jobs, you know, right. just not giving up until I you know in. Um, you had another guest here that said, you know, you know, I was listening to him saying that, you know, his first job was hanging pictures and doing mm -hmm. stuff like that. And it was just pretty much the same thing, you know, just land, landing little jobs. Hey, a deck here, you know, a little, a little thing there. Until it finally became, you know, something, right. you know, with more substance. I, um, that's what I was doing. I was trying to land work. Yeah. You had a mindset of just working hard and some, at some point things will work out, right? I had a mindset of I was going, I have a skill set. I have something to offer that someone out there needs. Right. I just have to be, I just have to get in front of that one person. Right. And, and, um, as far as other, uh, like you, you do carpentry, right? But you don't do any, let's say windows, roofing, stuff like that. You don't sell any of that. I don't know, partner it's, if it's small, if it's very small, I do, um, I do, you know, uh, get involved, um, mostly subbing out to, people that I trust mm -hmm. to do a good job, but um, I don't bid roofs, I don't bid sidewall, I don't bid flooring, right. just because I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm not in that realm of, of work, and I would never uh, be able to match the prices that some of these guys would have because they do it every day, and they're, you know, while I'm right. trying to put a few boards on, they got, you know, an entire room done. Right, right. So, right, so you wouldn't be competitive. I would not be competitive, yeah. no. And if you had to start over, would you, would you choose that trade that you're in? Or honestly, I, I, I can honestly say yes. Yeah. If I had to be anywhere in construction today, I would honestly say yes. I, I, I really do have a passion for, um, you know, uh, the interior trim aspect of construction, you know, staircases and carpet ceilings and, you know, the, the very, very detail oriented work, you know, um, you know, so I, yes, I enjoyed that more than, um, framing, which, you know, nothing wrong with that. Um, right. it is, it is a very fun right. job. And I want to say one of the, you know, some of the f most fast, you know, feeling days that I've had was framing because you know, the days just fly by and, um, it is a very fun, fast paced job, but I, there's something I like about the interior. Yeah. Trend that From the pictures you've shown me the, your work changes the house a lot right after you guys get in there and yeah. get out mm -hmm. um you might get some place in the house that looks dark and not too good mm -hmm. and after you guys get out there it just looks like a brand new house that, the, right so that that's satisfying too, right because then you see the person that, that your client looking at that and like that is the most satisfying right? part of it is a happy homeowner um, happy clients, happy contractor with the work that you've done that you can be proud of, right? right. That's the big, that's important, you know, that you can go home at night and, you know, think about that, you know, hey, I am proud of that, you know, project that I did.
how to show it off to other people. Right. Which right. is um, no money can pay that, right? That that's the no, no. I mean, it is, and 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 it builds. It's marketing for you. Right. You know, it's it's marketing for you. You do a good job. You know, like you like we were mentioning earlier, you do a good job to somebody, and you know your name gets thrown out there. Hey, this is the guy to call. Um, certainly, probably has happened to you. Certainly right. has happened to me. And uh, that's how you keep going. Yeah, we refer when when someone refers us to another person, that percentage of closing that that we have of like 30 percent just skyrockets. Yeah, you know? it's, absolutely. It's, it's like almost a set job, and you know, you do a bathroom at someone's house in our case, and then they say, "Oh man, I love my bathroom." And her aunt wants a bathroom. When I go there and sell that bathroom, it's almost like. They already saw the job we did. They already had the feedback. Yeah. It's know. a it's a saying that I heard a few days ago, which is new to me. Um, is it's your job to lose. Right. You know. Right. It's your job to lose. It's it makes so much sense. Yeah. So we do this thing, Jay, that I I read a, a sentence, and you tell me yes or never, like self explanatory. Right? Right, well, has it watch. happened to you or has it never happened? Let to me you? drink this coffee. <laughs> right. Um. So you can you can say yes or never, and then like pretty much explain. And the answer is yes or never. Yes or never, but then you can talk about you know whatever. <laughs> okay. a little bit, right. <laughs> um, the first one is gave a price at a job and notice you're gonna lose money in the middle. In the middle. Of the, the middle, middle of the work, you, you like realize that I'm, I'm gonna take a loss here. Yes. Many times. Um, enough times to be annoying. Yes. <clears throat> a lot of money. Sometimes. That's a lot of money, right? That's subjective, but a good amount. Yeah, what's well, exactly? It's subjective, <laughs> yeah. but um, I don't know. Uh, well, how do you deal with that then? You, you still gotta deliver the job professionally. So I got, I got a, I got a tip from a guy when I was starting out, and he says, um, you're gonna make money on some jobs. You are going to, um, you are going to, you know, even out on a few others, and you're gonna lose someone on some. The, the important part is at the end of the year, you're positive. You're net positive. And Who's this guy? Um, his name is Bill. Bill? Bill. You know Bill? Oh, yes, I know Bill. Yeah. <laughs> That's what Bill, that was Bill's, um, one of the many advices that he gave to me. You know, Bill, Bill's <laughs> been a, a, a good mentor for me anyways. I'm just kidding. Uh, I don't know Bill. I know 30,000 Bills. Cause you know 30,000 Bills. Yeah. This Bill, my Bill, Your has bill. been a very good mentor for me, right. especially in the beginning. Bill's a contractor? He uh, is a contractor. Yeah. And um, when, I, when, when I started, he was, you know, he was very successful. Yeah. Um, and uh, so that was his... That's a good way to put it. I yeah. like it. It's so true too. Man. Yeah. So, you know, you... you Gabe, I would rather, you know, don't take this too literal, but I would rather make sure that the jo job gets done correctly than, than worrying about losing a couple, you know, a couple thousand dollars and have an unsatisfied customer. Yeah. You know, we, we grew up where if I shake my hand with you and I'm, and it's, unless, you know, it becomes something completely different than what we talked about. Right. If I give you a price, if I say something to you, I try to honor that. Right, and th I think that's like the biggest difference between people that uh, make it and people that don't, you know, I think. But anyway, next one. Um, <laughs> wrote a text message to a client, like saying something like rude, and then erased it and like, it's not worth sending. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, definitely. But did you send it or did you I did erase? not send it. <laughs> No, I did not send it. I um, the actual thing that happened is happens is you get you get a, a a rude text, and you start answering it, and you and then halfway through you're like, you know what, let me just calm myself down, pause, right, and um, not say something when you know when emotions are high, right, and then just cool off. You know, you have to understand sometimes the clients they don't understand the entire process. And um, they could be frustrated with things, with expect, with having their own expectations, and, and you and thinking, you know, why is this taking longer than we thought, or this is not what we asked for, and not, and not letting the job go through to the end until you know and see a finished product. Right. So yeah, you know, we had that happen recently. You know, we're doing, we're in the middle of the ceiling, and the homeowner comes in and he says, "Well, this is this is what is this? Well, this is what I said. Oh, well, hold on, mm -hmm. we're not done yet. Mm -hmm. Okay, let us finish." And then right. you can, and then you can, you know, critique. But 
Right. But dealing with clients, it can be challenging. That's another thing that, like, you have to be patient. You have to, like you said, sometimes pause and the line motions take over. Mm -hmm. Because if they do, you might just right there lose a relationship. Yeah. Right? Just because of your temperament. All right, another one, last one for this part. Um, <laughs> use the client's bathroom and then notice that the toilet wasn't working. Never. <laughs> Thankfully. Never? Thankfully. <laughs> that's good, right? Thank you. Yeah, that, that's... I, so the rule is you flush first. first. But you always do that? Huh? You always do that? You learn that the hard way, though. So the, but, not, but I didn't do it. You learn it from someone else's mistake. Right? Yes, I learned from somebody else's mistake. Okay, good. Which is a funny story for another time. So podcast. tell us. Tell us. No, no, it's well, who is it? Who is it? I want to know. The, I want to know uh, who it is. No, the name is gonna stay. <laughs> the name is gonna stay redacted. All right, all right. But he used a very high-profile client's bathroom. It's Phil. Uh, was it Phil? No, it wasn't Phil. <laughs> but but he left a he left a uh, you know he left a message. He left a message yeah, there. He left a message. Like he wrote something or he left a message no, on the toilet. Left the toilet yeah. And uh, and then um, and the client know, wasn't happy. He was not happy yeah. at all. This is a what what kind of trade is he? Um, he's in the, he's in the, he's in the trades. <laughs> we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. Yeah. Um, so we talked a little bit about work, you know, construction, but also talking a little bit about your personal life. Sure. Did you grow up here or were you born in Brazil? No, I, well, yes, I was born in Brazil, but I came Where here. Where are you from there? Um, I'm from Curitiba. Really? Really? Yeah, I never knew that. That's crazy. Yeah. So, but you came here like... Really young, right? Yeah, so I say jokingly that I took, you know, that I took a shower in Brazil. Mm -hmm. came, How old were you when you came here? When I was seven. Seven years old? So you, and then you, you lived in Framingham? No, I lived in Lowell. Lowell. Lowell, Mass. Lowell. That's where you lived before you moved into New Jersey? That's where I lived before. I, I lived in Lowell and then from, in 2010, moved to Jersey and then bounced back from, um, bounced back a little bit, but then mostly stayed in Jersey until I got married in 2000 and. Well, yeah, I moved here when I, in 2013. How, how old were you when you, when you left Lowell? Like, were you like in your teens? Yeah. Uh, um, I want to say I left Lowell when I was 19. So, so Jay had this, I don't know, what would, it, what would you call BIZ? Was that a, a group of friends? It was a group of friends, yeah. Yeah, it was a group of friends. Right. Yeah, a very big group of friends, yeah. BRZ, right? Yeah. BRZ, and um, that's this is a low, right? That was a low. Low. Did you get Br Brazilian Brazilians? BRZ. BRZ, yeah, Brazilian. short for Brazilians. And did you guys like? Did you guys do anything with music or am I? Yes, you did, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. I was a I was a rapper from <laughs> sixteen to eighteen. I was a rapper. That didn't take off. I don't know. Or, well, or did you just give up when you were rapping? I I just I was just kind of <laughs> just kind of dropped dropped that to the side. Other than music. It was just a big group of friends that like hanging out, doing some, getting off, playing of, soccer, getting in trouble, getting in trouble. Yeah, yeah. mostly getting in trouble. Both, mostly <laughs> getting in trouble. Yes. So, I, I remember because it's funny. We we're almost same age, right? How old are you? Thirty three. Thirty four. Thirty four. I remember seeing BRZ because this used to be MySpace days. Mm -hmm. I remember seeing BRZ like some kids that because you guys would post. I don't know if there was a flag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? yeah. But did you leave Lowell because you were getting too much problems, or, or was it just no. a family thing that? I um, was it because of you that you guys? Left? I did, I did, I did get myself into a little bit of trouble. Um, in my when I was in my early, you know, all, almost twenty one, you know, nineteen twenty. But um, but I wasn't like a bad kid or anything. You know, it was just minor, minor stuff. Misdemeanors. Just a little missing, <laughs> but um, but I mostly moved to Jersey, honestly, to kind of just break away from that um, from that like you know lifestyle of of you know getting myself in trouble, and um. Well, you moved in with your family. Yeah, I moved in with my dad. Yes. With your just your dad. Yeah, my dad. Oh, I see. I see. Mm -hmm. So your dad lived there. Your mom lived in Lowell. My mom lived in Brazil at the time. She oh, was in Brazil, time. and oh, I, okay. my dad was in Jersey. And so I, who did you live with? So with my dad. No, but like in low. By myself. By yourself? Well, yes. 18 years old. Yeah, I was living by myself from like, when I was, I want to say when I was 17, I moved, I kind of started living by wow. myself. You and your brother? Or, yeah. yeah. So, so then, so you went to low, you stayed there for a few years, right? Um, did, what, you went to Jersey. Stayed there oh yeah, Jersey, years. Jersey. You, went to, you were in low and then you went to Jersey. Um, how, how did you meet Thais? I threw a church event. 
Oh, the, the youth, mm-hmm. youth meetings? Yeah. Like, and then that's when you ended up, how, how long did you guys date for? We did for about a year. So that, was, that wasn't too long before you guys no, got married. No, we did it for about a year and got married. She gave me a timeline. She says, <laughs> um, you have two years for us to get married. And I said, okay. So, um, so you're like, if you give me two years, I'll give you one year. Exactly. I'll do that yeah. in half the time. Right, right. You know? Nice. Overachiever. 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 Always. And um, did you ever think about bringing Thais there to New Jersey or was it really <laughs> She, when we got married, we were talking about when we were going to move, and she says, and, you, and I quote her directly, no, come to the Cape. I'm not going to Jersey. <laughs> that was her words. Right. And I think it was for the best, right? Yeah, definitely, 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 yeah. definitely. Definitely for the best. Did you, did you have something in mind, like, oh, it'd probably be better if she came here, because I'm, I'm more, like, I'm already have, I already have a job, or... Something. I was a little bit more established, um, but I remember getting the job offer on the phone um, when I was in Jersey, and... It was a lot more challenging because, uh, you know, I was pretty comfortable with that, you know, um, and to hear that you're going to be leaving your house at six in the, at five in the morning, getting on a boat, you know, there was like no sweetening. That's, this is the deal. Like, you know, he wanted to make sure that, like, hey, this is what you're getting yourself into. This is Emerson, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, and so he didn't, he didn't, he didn't sugar it at all. Which is and, good. Uh, yes. It's straightforward. So I remember sitting on my bed and, and just going like this and just thinking and thinking and thinking. And I was like, you know what, man? I'm not one to say no to a challenge. Right. And I had, luckily, I've always been, you know, good enough at my job where I kept my bridges open. Mm-hmm. So worst case, worst case scenario, come I, I come back, I have a, I have a steady job. I had a year round job. I, mean, I had mm-hmm. a steady job. I had gotten... Uh, offered even more money if I stayed because my boss didn't want to lose me at the time. Right. And I was going to make more money if I had stayed. And I was actually kind of taking a pay cut by coming here. Mm-hmm. But um, at the end, it kind of worked. It kind of worked itself. Yeah. Out. Yeah. It took you uh, probably, like, like you said, you know, a few months to really like settle in right here. Yeah. It was but, very fast for yeah. me, honestly. You always had a good attitude, too, right? Like, I, from what I remember. Um, when I met you and like since then we don't see each other a lot but when we do see each other mm-hmm. I always feel like you're have a high energy I try confident right? I mean, confident I and um, what's the word um, I forgot the word but someone that has a good good attitude pretty much you know? yeah, yeah I try uh, honestly dude. I mean I, I've been lucky to have some pretty good you know uh, some pretty good advice growing up and um, and I really think it stems from just trying to change you know uh, the direction I was going before yeah. I was before I turned twenty one, you have a I don't know if, if you mind sharing, but um, you have a a good testimony that you ended up spending some time in jail. Yes, right. Yeah. Um, for because of I don't I don't know. Can you tell a little bit? Of, uh, I don't remember. I know we we talked about this, but it's been it's been a while, right? That this happened. Yeah, this has been a while. Um, yes, I did have to uh, do about two months in jail. In 2015. And this is from, from... From from previous problems that I had. In, in Lowell? Yep. Yeah. No, in Jersey, actually. In Jersey? I got myself in a little bit of trouble in Jersey. And, um... Are, but, you, are you comfortable sharing that? Yeah, it's yeah. fine. Yeah, but anyways, it's not, there's not much to it. Yeah. Um, and... And I then, you know, I had to go and, and fix my problem. And thankfully, you know, I, I got my name cleared up after uh, doing two months. I, I finally went to the final court and they uh, hit me with a fine and, and that was it. But, but it was like a traffic stop, right? That, that got you, wasn't it? No, no, it was not a traffic stop. No. Uh, me and my brother decided to drink a little too much and we were abandoned by um, by the girls we were with. Uh, <laughs> they kind of abandoned us. So we were like 40 minutes away from home. Mm-hmm. So um, we said, well, let's just take the bus. Um, and we ended up trying to um, we ended up trying to find some money um, and, op- and open up a car door and try to find if we could find some money. And somebody called the cops on us for doing that. Okay. And we were just trying to you know get money to go home. Right. Because, you know, and then we were shit faced. Right. Had I been a little more sober, I would probably just have called my dad. But you know, <laughs> being nineteen, you know, right. at the time I was like nineteen years old, twenty right. years old, you know, just that embarrassing phone call but, at one thirty in the morning. But then the cops actually like found you guys. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And you guys, so oh yeah, so they got a call, you know, to two two guys were you know uh, opening cars and um you know in this honestly we're doing opening the car and seeing if we can find some change mm-hmm. to pay for a seven dollar 
uh, bus ride bus back, home. back home. And um, and so they, you know, they they arrested but, us, but you know, let us go, and then we had to. But you, but this stayed in your record, and and then like years later, that's when that's I when had to was go, that the traffic yeah. stop. Uh, yes, and then um, I got, uh, and then I didn't show up to one of the courts, and I got a uh, a warrant for my arrest, and then that's why I had to be in, be stayed for two months. Um, so, so you got pulled over, and then the the cop noticed they pulled, pulled my name. You didn't? Warrant. Did you just miss court? Like you didn't get this letter? Or did no, you... I know I missed the court. Oh, you know? Oh, I know. I missed court. <laughs> okay, then that's crazy, huh? But this is all. So just for a little more context, this right. is all from the time where I was just living my life yeah. in a different life, right? Know, a different lifestyle, and I paid for that after you know. Cause, cause by the time. You know, like obviously after um, you change, you start going to church more, right? I, I know because I can relate to your story yeah. a little bit. Um, and then you met Thais, you got married, but you when you when you got when you had to do two months, you were already married, right? I was already married. So it was like way like some time later, and that must have been tough for you, huh? Like, cause two months. I mean, I I know like from what I remember, you, you ended up being good because you got closer to god you yes had time to read a lot and um yeah it was it was it, what we're saying was, not to sound cliche or anything but everything happens for a reason so um through that you know through all that i you know spent time in there and um really got to reflect on the person i wanted to become and um i think that i had a lot to do with how i came out you know and and came out to for the next, you know, for after 2015, the things really just flipped the script for me. This is 2015? 2015, yeah. So I had gotten myself in trouble in 2010, 20, 2010 um, in Jersey, and then moved back to Lowell for a couple months. That's where I missed my court date. Mm -hmm. And then when I moved back to Jersey um, and stayed with my dad for a little longer, then I got married. And then that's where I had to come. When I came back here is when they, um, Ran my name and, and seen I had a word right. for my arrest. Yeah. So so it ended up being like obviously no one wants to stay in jail for two months, but for you it was a. Was it a, was a it was definitely a, something that needed a necessary evil for me, um, because you know when when God wants to do something in your life, um, he f first he's got to fix you know what's wrong, and for me you know having uh, my name, um, smeared. You know, in a way, because mm -hmm. I well, had, you know, because I had court problems. I was, you know, God wanted to kind of fix that. That's why I feel like, you know, God Clean wanted to fix up. that first to then move me on to the next thing. Right. And you um talking a little bit of, like, spiritual life. When, how old were you when you were baptized? Um, I was 22. So that was after, um... After you, so that's in New Jersey, right? You were in Jersey at this point, or ah uh, yes, I was in I was in Jersey. Yeah, and and um, how did you, how did you go from like liking you know stuff out there like drinking girls and I don't know if you did drugs, but all that stuff that no one has to offer. So to, I yeah, so we were we were you know speaking openly, we were pretty, like we never got involved with like serious you know I want to say serious crime. We we're just kids man uh you know experimenting with you know, drugs and um just being you know kids that uh really didn't have any any better guidance you know in a way growing up in you know uh Lowell, um i grew up in the projects pretty much and then from there going to jersey you know which was not no playground wasn't a playground either I just kind of got tired of it, Gabriel, to be honest, and um, just had this feeling like uh, this, you know, uh, this, this like that I wanted to change my life. Your parents are, uh, have always been from, from church. Or yeah, they have. So you grew up going to church. Yeah. Going to, like, yep. And then, that, and then preteens kind of said, ah, I don't want to do this anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to, I want to meet girls. I want to, you know, smoke. I want to yeah. do this and that. Yeah. But it's all. You know, I did that. I lived that kind of lifestyle for about seven years, and right. um, but it was for I, you know, looking back, it was just so I learned all I needed to learn from living that kind of life. So I would never want to live that kind of life anymore. Because right. something that happens um, 
for people that sometimes just stay at the side, they always have that curiosity of what is it like, you know, hey, well, you know, get that kind of like, hey, I don't know what the other side is like. And you know, there's really, it's depending on what you do, it's just a, just a very, you dig yourself a deep hole. Right, right. Yeah. It's, um, it's always curious to me, like, to, to hear how people, you know, um, left the world and, and coming to more of a, like, a closer relationship with God. Yeah. You know, but, and today, um, so now when I speak to my kids, you know, I know what I'm talking about. I lived through some experiences. I'm not going to just be, you know, this is something I read. Oh, this is something I see. This is something I, you know, uh, researched. No, yeah. I, dude, I live this. This is what you're going to go down if you go down this path. Right. You know, this is what you can expect. So, you know, as we brought up a few times already, you know, things that happen later, early in your life to prepare you for the future. I believe, you know, this, what, what has happened in my past is a way that I can teach my right. children today, you know, um, lessons. For sure. And, and so obviously you started going to church, met Thais, and then decided to have kids. Then just started having, <laughs> then just started popping out kids. You've had, you've had, you have four kids, right? Four your kids. oldest is? Eight. Eight. And your youngest? Is two. Two. Almost two. It's so. going to be two in a few days. Is it three boys? I have three boys and one girl. Three boys and one girl, right? And now you're done? I'm done. You're done? Yeah. You always say to me, like, you know, a lot of times we talk about, like, have kids, have kids, you know, like, kids are, like, the greatest thing. Um, you know I'm going to have a kid now in I do. a couple of months. I do. I've yeah. congratulated you, but for I will congratulate you in front of Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, father tips. Oh. Dealing with the wife, right? We were talking about this the other day, me and um, my wife, Anna. First week after the baby's born, we're, we're, everything's so new to us, you know? Like, we're like, we're just me and her now, we're watching a show, and we're like, in a few months, we're going to have a baby, you know? Like, give give the 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 people that are not parents or people that are going to become parents, give us some tips. Um, don't, don't think you're going to have all the answers, because you're not. Uh, it's definitely a learning experience with the first one and it does get better with the second one and uh, they kind of become their own little little pod you know eventually <laughs> and um, but you will not have it all figured out you will not you know neither will your wife um, the tip that I got from somebody else that I can pass to you is um, just be very, very understanding to your, uh, to your wife the first couple of months. I guess that a lot, no. Just be very understanding. Uh, she's going. She did something that's going through something that you are never going to go through. You are never going to have to experience. Um, but it will change your life for the rest of your life. Now, every single step you take has a little bit more weight to it because it's not just involving you. Mm -hmm. It's about you and your son and your, you know, and the, your family. So right. every single action you take every day has a little bit more uh, weight. Right. And, and um, I talked to one of my boys who just had a kid. When I found out when I was pregnant, I was pretty, like, I don't know what the word, impacted. And something changed in me right there. I know it did because I know I had to change some habits that I did. But he tells me that like nothing, it's it's gonna be a whole new difference when I touch the baby, like when the baby's born. And I is that something that you definitely, definitely, definitely. But um, like when you when you find out your dad for the first time, you're like, I already feel like a dad. Yeah, yeah. You gotta go. You gotta go to Walmart. You gotta pick up some some new balances. You know, you do. You gotta go pick up some new balances. That's a dad outfit. You gotta go get you know. The I gotta I gotta take bro with me. I don't. You know gotta go get the Carhartt pants. You know, you gotta, gotta, gotta get a belly. You gotta get the beer belly. Yeah. You gotta get that going. <laughs> it's important. You know, what kind of, because as you know, he's gonna, your baby's gonna look at you and he's gonna. That's the father kit. Huh? That's the kit. Belly. That's the kit. Belly, belly what else? Yeah. New balance. The new balance. Yeah, the high socks. High socks yeah. with shorts. The you get yourself oh my a god, more. that's terrible. Yeah, you gotta get yourself a little more. <laughs> a little more? We can't have a landscaper. No, nope. no, not anymore. No, nope, no, nope. you gotta get yourself a lot more. Are you doing all this? No, <laughs> no, no. I'm just giving you advice. I don't know. Okay. No, the real advice is yeah. um, that you are not. You are. 
you are not ready for any of it, but you just instinctively, you just kind of like, you know, go with the flow. You're going to create your own little um, routine. Mm -hmm. you're, you're with your kids and you're going to have your, your own, you know, your own thing going. You are the king of your castle. Right. And um, now you, you have a family to raise and you will, you know, your family has, or is going to be a little different than my family, right. a little different than, you know, right. uh, uh, what our family was in the past. Because you can bring in, you know, your ideas and your and your um, your philosophies. It's funny you say that. I'm reading this book called Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. So I read, I already read this book, and now there's Seven Habits of Highly Effective People for Families. That's the one I'm reading now, and it, it talks about that your family is going to be different from other families, mm -hmm. but there's principles, you know, that you can follow. Principles of like, I mean, I'm I'm on the first. Um, the first uh, um, chapter, but like proactivity, you know, pause a lot, you know, don't don't let your emotion like we talked earlier yeah. take over because sometimes you're gonna want to say things that you don't mean, you're gonna have to take it back. But to you, to your point, it did say that like every family is a little bit different, you know. So you, you can tell me your experiences, and it could help me in certain ways. But it's at the end of the day, it's gonna be different. Yeah. Right. Um, let me, there's one more thing I wanted to do. This is, this is, <laughs> I tell you a word and then you tell me a little bit about this word. Okay. All right. You know, um, in Portuguese, we have the same for this, but we'll leave it. Bacha bola. Okay. Back and forth. Yeah. Back and forth. There you go. That's what I needed that actually. Back and forth. So I'll give you a word. You can, you can, you know, you can say it. Tell me a sentence or a couple of sentences, nothing to too long, but it doesn't have to be like one word. Okay. Um, let's see. I got a couple here. Let me see which one I want to do. Um, all right. Uh, we just talked about family, so I won't give you family, but let's talk about communication. Important. Essential. Um, imperative. Okay. okay. You got the big words today, huh? Yeah. You can't even pay. I came a little. I I, I got a thesaurus. <laughs> Did you put some words? Some uh, like nice words? Yeah, I got to, I got a thesaurus <laughs> in the truck. Um, yeah. Uh, just just the foundation, you know, of of any relationship, uh, business, personal, um, any for everything. You just need open communication, and as a man, we get. I get in a lot of trouble for lack of. So I've been. 2023 and 2024 has been a big year for me as far as making sure I communicate things to not just at home with my wife, but to, you know, in my business with my guys, with my clients. Um, Cause you might have a good idea, but as if it's your good ideas in your mind and, and, assume, not, and not, and not, you know, uh, and not uh, spoken, right. you know, how are people going to know? Exactly. Right? Yeah, sometimes so, we assume people, are gonna do what we want without communicating. Then we frust get frustrated. They get frustrated. Yeah. It's not good for anybody. Um, United States. Love, appreciates, um, land of opportunity. Um, everything that you know, my father and my mom set out to do here. I think they've achieved with their children. You know, we haven't spoken about my brother, but my brother is also. Um, you know, uh, highly successful in the construction industry. Um, we gotta bring your brother here. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I think he'd be more than more than happy to come. But I think my parents' sacrifices, you know, doing what they had to do, um, paying dividends, pay, paying dividends now. Yeah. yeah. Do you think your brother would be like? Because some people that I call them, they're so shy to come here. Uh, you know? I, I mean, because you were you were you were fine. Like you you were never like uh, first first. Invitation, you're like, yeah, I'll do it. Yeah, sure. Some people are like, mm, I don't know if I want to be in front of camera, you know, like talking for a couple, for like an hour or something. I, I think my brother would be okay. Yeah, he seems like he's not very shy, right? But when the camera's rolling, you never know. Something's changed. Um, how did I say this one? Time. Uh, time. Not enough. Not enough time. Uh, you get, you know, you can get lost in time. You need, you need more time, and you need to absolutely make sure you're doing the best you can with time. Uh, 
with our routine in construction and in life. You know, you wake up, go to work, come home, do a couple of things, go to bed. You know, and you just need to make time for important things. Yeah. You know, if we're if we're still on the subject of import, how how is important in, in you know as being a father and being a business owner, then it's you know absolutely essential that you know how to manage your time. Right. Especially like I mean, like you have four kids, you have three kids. Um, not wasting time is not good, right. Not wasting time is definitely big, and then giving yourself time when you think you 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 should give yourself a little bit of a break is also important. Right, 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 right. Um, a dream. Right now, it's a house in somewhere in California. <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. You you plan on moving there at some point? I plan on just having a house there. One just day. a house, just but not no the like living there. No, I yeah. I love the Cape. So I, you want a house somewhere warmer? Yeah, I want to be able to get out of here in the winter eventually. Same. So you have the same dream. Yeah. That's that's not, maybe we can buy a house like next to each other. San Diego's nice. It is nice. San Diego's nice. You've been there. I've been. Um, Chago's there, right? Yeah. Chago's in Irvine still, or? Yeah, he's in Anaheim, I believe. Yeah. Chago's his um brother-in-law. Yes. Yes. Chago would be probably a good guy to bring. I mean, Chago. I mean, he, he's a, he's a mechanic, right? Yeah, he's um. Yeah. He opened up his own um, mobile mobile mechanic service. Yeah. So he has bands yeah. um, that go out and service your your vehicles at your home or at right. your place of business. I gotta call you back, Tag. So I call me the other day. <laughs> I was gonna call him back. It's been two weeks. Yeah. I'm gonna call him back. Yeah, you're, you're good. You're 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 not good at that. No, I'm gonna call him back. I gotta work on it. Is calling back on that list? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> um. Last one to finish up. God. Uh, God, to me, personally, is the absolute pivot and light in, in my life. Like, the pivot point in my life where I change my ways and the light that I see today is God. And, um, you know, just love and we can do nothing to earn his favor, but somehow he has enough mercy and, you know, ha wakes us up every morning. Right. His mercy, it says that his mercy is renewed right every exactly. morning. So, um, Dude, Jay, thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. It's um, an honor to be here. Yeah, I knew it was going to be good. Um, talk a little bit about poker before we end this. Um, when are you going to get it going? <laughs> Anytime. You guys are playing. You guys don't call me. Uh, yeah, we will. Well, who, who's who's playing? You know, you gotta get with um, you gotta get with the 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 pit boss, Phil. That's the that's, that's no, that's my boss. guy. Huh? That's exactly. Guy. So, you, you, so you he's the one who calls people. Yeah, I think on I think Phil gave up on me. I think he called me for the last like five five years or so. Yeah, maybe you should call him back. I never made it. Maybe you should call him back. <laughs> no, I did call him back. I just never made it to the poker session. Maybe you should make some time to call people. Back. Oh, there you go. There you go. You know, which you're going to, hey, your days are limited once you have that kid. Right? Yeah. So we got to get a poker session before the kid. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. We gotta make it you're going to be very busy for the next couple months. Who, who will be going? Me, you, Phil? A couple guys. Yeah, we I a got a couple guys. We have a good group of guys. Yeah. They're, all, they're all, you know, cool guys. Just yeah. like we were talking earlier. Yeah. And, um, yeah. It's, you said it's you, you, play the, you have played at the casino. We've been a couple of times. Yeah, how's my, that experience? my brother's been going a little bit. It's yeah. been fun. Yeah. It's been fun. That's my experience. We go to Twin River. Twin River, where is that? Twin Rhode Island. Rhode Island? Mm -hmm. I don't know, I don't think I've ever been there. I've been to, I've been to one in Connecticut, which, which is, Fo is it Foxwood? Foxwood, Fox yeah. 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 Playing poker at a casino is really wild. Well. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, I went for the experience really yeah, just to see yeah. how it is. Like playing with your friends is fun, you know, you can mess up and all that, like, but at the casino is like, <laughs> it's tense. Yeah, you better play a couple games before you go. Right. Back. What about soccer? Have you been playing soccer? No. You know we played a game of um, married guys against the young guys. I know. I know. I I was gonna go to that game. I know you were. Yeah. Happened? I had a I had a, a meeting time. with a client. You didn't make time, man. Right? I had a meeting with a client. <laughs> Phil was supposed to go too. Yeah. I don't know what happened to him. But we're gonna do it again. Okay. Yeah, we're gonna do it again. I think I don't know if it's next week or in a couple. It was fun. It was so much fun. Man. I bet it was. So, I really wanted to make it. Um, she had yeah. time only at five thirty after she got home from work, and yeah. um, you guys started at like six. So. So what's more important, soccer with your friends or work? Did not work. <laughs>
Especially with four kids. Right, right, yeah, that's true. If they're if they're really your friends, they'll understand. They'll understand, man. Yeah. Um but the next time just make sure that you don't have any appointments after six. I will try and make sure. time for you. Make sure. Tell your plan. Your plan's always available in the morning, the next day. Not always, right? Well, she works, um, and... This might have been a really good lead, right, for you to really want to be there at a certain point, at a certain time. Or do you do you don't have a difference between, like, oh, this is a great lead, I, I had to make it. This is not so great, I can throw it to the next day. I try, to make, I try to make, I try to make, I try to make, uh, whenever it's convenient for a homeowner, if I can make it, yeah. I try to make it. Yeah, yeah I do too, I do yeah. too. Like, when leads come in, I, I'm big on responsiveness. Yeah. You know, when I call and I, like, sometimes my wife's like, why, you say you don't work Saturdays? I'm like, but I can attend, I mean, I can go to a meeting that's going to take me an hour, you know? Yeah, my rule on Saturdays, I try to be home before noon. Same. Yeah. I try, but, like, sometimes it's, it's hard. But even Sundays, like, I, I'm going to change that now that I'm having a kid, I believe. But even, it, it's, to me, I guess, meeting with clients is not, like, I like it, you know? But then I'm leaving some family time behind. Mm -hmm. So I got to know how to, like, balance that, especially now that I'm going to have a kid. Yeah, so one of the things um, is that when I, you know, when I was working in Nantucket, I, I missed the first year of my first, of Noah's, pretty much his life. Mm -hmm. I would leave in the morning, he was sleeping, and mm -hmm. I'd come back at night and he was sleeping. And I'd get videos of what his first words were or what his first time walking by video because I was out working. And I would spend you know, a little time with him on the weekends and admittedly, uh, you know, you're tired from an entire week's worth of work. So you kind of want to like wind down and, you know, so I would spend time with Noah pretty much on like Sundays. Mm -hmm. So just... You know, if it's a sacrifice you have to make, uh, you know, your wife will understand, but just, you know, be careful. Time, yeah. time flies. For sure. Yeah, that's what they say. You don't, your kid is only a baby for so long, only a kid for so long, and, and before you know it, they're, they're out. Yep, no, when I, now I get home, my kids are, you know, playing Fortnite, they, don't get, they, <laughs> care, they couldn't care less if I walked through the door. You know? Really? Hey, Dad. Yeah. How old is Noah? Eight. Eight. Eight, yeah, he just said eight, yeah. Yeah, bro, time flies. Yeah. For sure. Certainly. You got to enjoy every pace. Sure. Yeah. Jay, thank you again, brother. I really appreciate it. Thank um, you. Thank you for having me. Yeah. We, we got to do it again. Yeah. Yeah. We, um, we're um we going to be moving to a bigger studio in a couple weeks to a couple months, mostly. And then I want to I wanna invite some people back. Sure. And now we're going to have a bigger table. Maybe have uh, a poker table. A poker table. Maybe we can do a live. We can do a poker, live. A poker huh? That'd be nice, right? A poker podcast. <laughs> right. Um, I would I I told Fagner maybe having him as well. Yeah. You know, having a couple guys that like the yeah. conversation might flow a little bit different. He he might have different questions or different curiosities than yeah. than I do. And it's, oh, yeah, really it's very nice what you're doing. You know, um, speaking to you know people that you know, young entrepreneurs, business owners, and um, it's very 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 cool thing you're doing. Yeah. The idea is like bring some information to people and also like a little bit. Of you guys' background. Yeah. I'm also like getting out of my comfort zone. This is only the fifth episode. I still, I'm still learning, you know, um, a lot mm -hmm. on what to ask and what not and like letting you talk, not cutting what you're saying. And then sometimes like they tell me, um, also like if you, if you're talking too much, not that you did, but not that anyone did, but if someone's talking too much, like kind of help them out because mm -hmm. it's everything's so new to us. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Shut up, Sean. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Everything's so new to yeah, us. Yeah. Like, well, when Fagner asked me about like doing a podcast, I've always wanted to do a podcast. Like, this is obviously more like towards construction, but I was like, let's do it. Um, you saw in the beginning, I get nervous in the beginning like with the introduction. I don't know what to say. Like, I mean, I know what to say, but every time I'm going to say, it just blanks out. You know, like, yeah. so I've been trying to like um, practice, practice like, some things that I'm going to say and I watched a lot of podcasts and I, I grabbed some things from here and there. I'm sure it, it's only my fit by, by my like 20th. I think I'll be like very natural. Yeah. You know, yeah. But, I think it's a good thing you have going. Uh, may God bless you in this new uh, challenge. And, um, I'd be more than honored to come back. We'll have you back in a few months. All right. Thank you, Jay. Thank you. Bye, bro. Thank you. Carpentry Construction.com